Hi everybody, all the managers. It's a concerning atmosphere, so it's quite apt for Stoke because I think even when you're an opposing manager here, you're pretty aware of the, the kind of special atmosphere here. But how important is it? I mean, Jose Mourinho has said that Stamford Bridge is lacking a little bit of atmosphere this, this season, and he thinks it's affecting the team and their, and their, their results. Um, how important is the atmosphere and, and the atmosphere here, do you think? Yeah, I think it's always had an impact. I think, yeah, as a player, you always want to be inspired by the occasion and, and by the crowd and their reaction to, to what's going on. And I think uh, that's that's true whether or not you're, you're a player or, or a manager. You, you want your team helped by your crowd, which thankfully we're, we're always helped by, by the, the crowd here. They're absolutely magnificent. And, uh, yeah, no, I think I think it does help teams. Uh, I think if there's a little bit of apathy around the place, or, or people aren't too enamoured by what they're watching, maybe, um, then that can affect players, and that, that can uh, affect sometimes the com confidence that they have going out on the pitch. But um, the onus is always on the players to to produce and give the, the crowd something to cheer. Thank you. Um, the last few games you've had. Um reason to, to complain about refereeing decisions, shall we say. Um, and I think you were going to speak to Mark Riley this week, weren't you, about the specific incident with, um, with Song's challenge on June. Have you got any, anything to tell us about that conversation? Um, we I think this uh, meeting's planned for, for next week. Um, just just uh, because we felt uh, we had observations uh, that we made as a club and as individuals certain games and we, we just need a bit of clarification and uh, uh, we're pleased that uh, they've accepted our invitation and uh, we'll have conversations early next week. What, what themes would you want to talk to them about? Well, any number, but it's, it's probably better to have the conversations first with people involved and then uh, we'll relate it to you. Will you tell us afterwards? Well, it depends how it goes. <laughs> I thought you might say that. Um, England score's been announced. With uh, Stoke fans noticing a glaring omission again, Ryan Shawcross not in there. Um, despite what you've said about it, it doesn't seem to have made any difference. Um, I don't know what more you can say no. about it. It's frustrating for you, frustrating for him. Yeah, well, Ryan just has to keep on playing as well as he is. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with his performance. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, those performances haven't been deemed good enough to, to get into the international squad again. Um, but those are decisions that are made by Ryan and his team, and uh, uh, I respect his judgment. Uh, as I said before, maybe uh, he's got a group of players that he wants to keep together right through uh, the campaign. Maybe that's what's going on, and that's why it's more difficult for the players to break in. But uh, almost always, uh, when the squad is is released, there seems to be at least one new face in there. But uh, maybe Ryan isn't viewed as a new face. Yet. Um, Victor Moses has, has impressed so many people this season with his performances. Um, he's created 16 chances for teammates in those eight games, the stats will tell you. Um, and we asked him after the game on, on, on Saturday whether you know he'd like to make this loan move permanent, and he said, look, I'm, I'll do the best I can for Stoke, but I'm still a Chelsea player. What can you do to try and make him feel as though his home is here in the longer term and maybe talk to Chelsea in the meantime? Um, well, he's, he's absolutely right in saying that he, he is still a uh, Chelsea player. We, we're delighted with what he's producing, and uh, that was the key from from everybody's point of view. It was that he'd come here, he'd, he'd play games, he'd get back on track because he'd had two years of really of not, not playing or affecting games. So uh, Chelsea obviously wanted to, to enable him to get his confidence levels up again. Um, so. As we stand here and now, I think everybody's winning because Chelsea obviously again a player back up to form. We're delighted with what he's producing for us. Um, but further than that, we, you can't really comment because, like I said, it's, it's he was allowed to come here uh, with a view to getting game game time under his belt, which is, is what the loan system is about, and uh, we benefited from that. And Victor certainly has benefited from playing with us. He's certainly enjoying his time, um, but his parent club has, uh, has benefited as well because he's out there playing, and that's that's their intention. So um, we're not at the point where we're going to have conversations about Victor's future because it's, it's not the right time to do it. But uh, it's nice to say we're, we're absolutely delighted with what he's.
he's produced uh, you mentioned stats there and uh, in almost every game he's, he's having an impact and uh, as you point that he did uh, I've got a lot lots of options of those who go like to Michael Amantovic uh, Asaidi as well who uh, did really well last year and they found it very difficult to get game time because Victor's done so well so that illustrates the point where so he's got to continue in the same vein. It's still very early, but uh, we're really encouraged with what he's producing. And maybe the competition that we have now for places is, is helping him because he, he knows he's, he's got to play well to, to stay. Thank you. And finally for me, it's, I suppose I think I might have asked you this before about the consistency that you're trying to get, that you actually achieve for a big chunk of last season, especially towards the back end of the season, that maybe it's just escaped you at, at this season so far. And I, I don't know whether that's maybe not to do with performances or not, but since August, lost, drawn, won, lost, won, lost, lost, drawn. It's, it's quite consistent. It's, it's consistently inconsistent, isn't it? I, I mean, how do you get that? How does a manager say? It's, it's easy to say, I want consistency. It's a harder thing to do, isn't it? Well, well I think I mentioned before that uh, this early part of the season is, is stop start in terms of international breaks and uh, that continuity that you try to find in performances and results is sometimes compromised by, by the fact that you're not con in continuity of work um, leading into games, and I think that's a bit of an effect on certainly us on occasions, and uh, I think other clubs have experienced a similar situation when guys are going off for 10, 12 days at a time and then coming back having a different type of work and they have to get back up to speed. So, so that does impact. Uh, we're leading into uh, the last international break of, of the year, thankfully, from my point of view, because I think now it's, it's really a key time for us to get consistent work week in, week out, and that will help us to get the consistency that ourselves and a lot of teams are looking for. Thank you. Uh, can I just run through injuries, suspensions, uh, players back, who, who's, who's around? Uh, well, we had a uh, poor day, unfortunately, on Wednesday. We, we, uh, we had a couple of breaks, uh, Jonathan Texero, unfortunately, uh, got stood on. Broke a bone in his foot, so he's going to be out for six to eight weeks. I think it is, and that's going to have to be pinned. So that was that was a blow and a, a surprise to us because it wasn't um, an incident that we thought would, would lead to that amount of time out again. But these things happen. Uh, Mark Ronaldovic uh, uh, has broke his hand. Um, we're hopeful that the cast that he's got is uh, it's going to be okay for him. And to play as other players have played with similar casts, so we don't anticipate that it would be a pro problem for us. So um, that's him. Um, apart from the other injuries, the Alexa Glenville and Robert Hoos, they're still not available. Uh, Long term injuries, obviously, are there as well. Um, but apart from that, unless I've forgotten something. Crouch and Bars, they're back? They? Yeah, yeah, they're back from suspension. They're fitting, fitting well and unavailable. Spurs have been busy in midweek. Uh, how do you view their, their travels in midweek as uh, influencing the game on a Sunday? Some, some managers think they've got a big enough squad, some will think they will hope maybe they're a bit tired. Well, it can have an impact. Sometimes it's, de it's dependent on, on where they're playing, obviously, and the length of time travelling. Uh, sometimes it, it's dependent, and uh, sometimes there's more of an impact when maybe you're away in Europe and then you fly back and then you've got an away game. I think it impacts more under those circumstances. That's not the case for Tottenham this weekend. So I don't anticipate it would be too much of a problem. And like you said, they, they left any number of players behind as well. And they have got a very, very accomplished squad with lots of players that they can choose from. So um, any problems that people would maybe suggest could be a problem for them. I don't really see that, not on this occasion, because I think uh, we'll have had time to, to recover and recuperate and they'll be ready to go, I'm sure. They've got an accomplished squad, but they just seem to be struggling again to find that word consistency. Surprised at that? Well, maybe, maybe, given, given the, the reasons I, I tried to put follow, forward earlier on, he's obviously dealing with that, and, and he has European games late in, in the working week as well, so we, I would imagine he's as frustrated as myself and other managers in terms of his working week it is fragmented at this moment in time and, uh, and it's not easy to get the work on the train which that you feel you need to, to put in place. Um, so maybe maybe it is having more of an impact there. I don't know how, how the working week is, is structured so I couldn't 
really comment on it, but uh, maybe, maybe if you're looking for reasons, maybe that's one. And you're due a win, aren't you, in London? And due a win at Spurs, Stokes' record there, and, and also in the capital just seems to be a bit, a bit poor in recent years. Puzzling that. Well, yeah, uh, uh, that would you'd have to say maybe our waveform bulls not necessarily just in London. It was, was a great. Uh, we, we, we'd like to think this year that that's going to improve because I think uh, we've got in some decent enough performances uh, on, on our travel certainly this year and on the back end of last year. Um, so we're hoping that's going to continue certainly on, on Sunday. It's not an easy fixture. You look at any game against Spurs on the road, um, given the quality that they have, then it is, it's not easy. But it's, um, I just sense that uh, we were running into a little bit of form. I think uh, uh, being disappointed twice against Southampton, but showing uh, a lot better form in the second half of the top capital one uh, fixture, and then taking that into the West Ham game when we were by far away the, the bad side of the day, didn't get the maximum points that our performance deserved, but I sense that the, the form is, is returning, and that, that's encouraging. When it's not happening away from home, what, what do you do? Do you just try and tweak the, all the build-up, the arrangements, something like that? Well, I, I think you, you have to be consistent. So you, doing this a long time and, uh, and you know what works and you know what doesn't work more often than not and uh, it's, it's about having that continuity of work and um, making people understand what, what's acquired strengths, weaknesses, all those things and um, then on the day uh, you have to perform well and uh, you need a little bit of luck uh, anybody who says you don't need luck you make your own luck uh, I doubt that it's, uh, you need the run of the ball at the right time. If you can score first as an away side, then that helps you as well. So, lots of things have to come into place to, to obviously win away in the Premier League, which is very difficult. And we're at the end of that first 10 game block. Are you a manager that, that carves the season up into these blocks? And, and if you do, what conclusions do you draw at the end of the first 10 games? Uh, well, we, we do that. Uh, it's not necessarily in, in, in 10 game blocks, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's less than that. Would be no more than uh, ten games, and that's quite a big chunk. Um, but I think, from our point of view, we've I think at this stage we've got more points on the board, correct me if I'm wrong, than, than we did at this stage last season. We think we're in a good place for 12 months. Long that, obviously now, um, 15 to 16 months down the line and since I walked through the door. So we've had the benefit of, of that work as well. So uh, we're looking ahead to the next few months because distraction of international football and the breaks that that brings to uh, you, you, the work that you want to do, then uh, we feel the next few months will be will be good for us, although we're, we're up against big sides in, in, in that period. Just looking at the stats as well, it's 10 years since you entered club management. Mm, yeah, 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 probably is. A bit older, a bit wiser? I'm certainly older. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to think I'm wiser, it'd be something wrong if uh, after 10 years I've learned to uh, a little bit on the go, so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gone very, very quickly. Um, I've actually been a manager for, for longer than that. Obviously, I was an international manager before a club manager, so uh, uh, to survive that, that long and still be talking to you guys as a, as a person in charge of a Premier League club, uh, is, I take as a feather in the cap. Thank you. Mark, uh, Spurs have lost, uh, already lost three games at home out of five. Is this a good time to be playing Spurs? Uh, difficult to say. I mean, the thing you know with the side and the squad that Tottenham have got that on their day they can beat anybody in the Premier League. Um, if everything flows for them and the players play well to the, their maximum, then it's, it's a very difficult fixture and, uh, and they're, the, they're the top side. Um, and like I say, they can beat anybody. But um, <coughs> I think if, if from our point of view, if there's any lack of confidence, then if we start well and uh, we have the ability to show how confident we are, which we're in a good place in, in that regard at the moment, then, uh, then that can affect the opposition, uh, be it Tottenham or anybody else. So it's really up to us to make sure if they, there is any apprehension in the play that uh, our level of performance affects that. You have won quite a lot, when you were uh, Blackburn manager. I think you won the last, last minute winner by Pick Salmon. Yeah. Can you remember that game? Is it um, I remember thinking what the hell is Chrissy Samba doing up there at this late stage of the game when we got a 0-0 draw in the back, so uh, maybe I wasn't as positive as I should have been and just let him go, but 
Yeah, it was a great goal. The first single goal, I think uh, he got it on the edge of the box and whacked it into the top corner. So we're all delighted. There was quite a reaction after the goal. So we have uh, the opportunity to have a similar one at the weekend. Excellent. And Mark, what big loss is Glenn Whelan in the Oh, well, we're, we we the, the the good thing, uh, if it can be a good thing under this circumstance, given that we've lost. Uh, Player that was a big factor for us is that we've, we've got good cover and we've got good quality in there. So uh, um, if we didn't have that depth in, in our squad, then it uh, would be more concern for us. But uh, I have to say, we've got the option of Jeff, who Jeff Cameron has come in. I don't know if Steve said well at the first start for a long time, and I thought he was, he was excellent um, against West Ham. So we've been able to compensate for him, thank you. Because he's been a very player for club and country recently. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, so like I said, it's it's good that we've got the depth and the squad that we have because if we didn't, then we'd, we'd, we'd miss him more. I know I've asked you about it a few times, but has he officially been withdrawn from the Irish squad? No, no, I don't think that's the case. Um, as a club, we, we don't think he's ready. Um, he's not. He's, he's training with the officials. He's, he's making good progress in tennis too, because he's working exceptionally hard. But uh, He's not joined in any training sessions with us. It's, it, there's not planned to do that. Um, probably uh, Ireland are uh, within the rights to call him up to be assessed, but uh, our view is that he's, he's not ready. I mean, if we had a game um, this time next week, uh, he wouldn't be playing for us because it's too, too soon. It'd be too much of a risk. But um, I know Glenn absolutely wants to be part of Ireland. It's really important to him. So, uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll meet up and then the Irish FA will have to make the correct decision. But you said you'd want talks with the FA, have you had talks with the I, I think our medical department spoke to their doctor and whatever and just uh, <laughs> given updates, but uh, we haven't tried to influence that decision as yet, but uh, I think it's for the Irish FA to, to really look at it and make a, a correct call. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.